Hello, my name is Stephen Harrison, and I'm a doctor that specializes in liver disease. The liver is an amazing organ that does a lot of important things for your overall health. The liver helps process what you eat and drink into energy and nutrients and filters out harmful substances from your blood. The liver is also a very adaptive organ. When the liver is damaged, it has the unique ability to heal itself. Now let's talk about why you're here. If you're watching this video, it is probably because your doctor is concerned you may have a problem with your liver. How bad is the problem? We don't know yet, but you may have risk factors that your doctor is concerned about. Most people assume that alcohol is the only cause of liver disease. This is simply not true. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and non-alcoholic steatohepatitis are the most common types of liver diseases. In fact, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is continuing to grow in developed countries all over the world, including the U.S. and Europe. Nowadays, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, which is also known as NASH, is becoming the leading cause for liver transplantation in Western countries. Hepatitis means inflammation of the liver, and steato means fat. NASH is the more severe form of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Too much fat in your liver can cause inflammation of and damage to your liver cells. Eventually, in some patients, all this could lead to cirrhosis, which is the severe scarring of your liver and other health-related complications. Some of the common health conditions that contribute to these two types of fatty liver disease include high cholesterol, high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, and obesity. It's important to remember that you're not alone. Hundreds of millions of people across the world are living with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. By understanding your condition, seeing your doctor regularly, and managing your overall health, for instance, with diet and exercise, living a normal life with liver disease is possible. Let's say you've been told that your results of your liver function blood test were abnormal. Your doctor may suspect you have NASH. The most accurate way for your doctor to diagnose NASH and how much you're at risk for complications is with a procedure called a liver biopsy. This procedure is considered the gold standard in medicine for diagnosing and measuring liver disease. It is estimated that more than 600,000 liver biopsies are performed annually worldwide. Some non-invasive tests such as ultrasound, MRI, or fiber scan, which measures the stiffness of your liver, can provide some good information about the health of your liver. However, an accurate diagnosis to determine the amount and cause of scarring in your liver as well as the severity of inflammation still require a liver biopsy. Liver biopsies are usually performed as an outpatient procedure, meaning there are no hospitalization stay, and it's done under local anesthetic, a numbing type of medicine that is applied to the area where the needle is inserted. During the biopsy, a small piece of liver is removed using a needle, about the size of a small paper clip. This sample is then examined closely under a microscope, which gives your doctor the ability to look at the cells of your liver and determine the extent and nature of liver damage, if any. When my doctor first told me that I needed a liver biopsy, a lot of questions just came through my mind. Uh, what were the side effects? Uh, what were the steps? After 20 years of being diagnosed with a fatty liver, um, having a doctor that actually wanted to do a biopsy kind of put me at ease. He wanted to try and understand where my liver has gone, you know, how far, how far along, uh, whether a disease has progressed. The liver biopsy is not as bad as I have made it out to be. Yes, I was scared just like any other person, but once I did it, I'm glad I did it because now I do know where I stand. Having seven biopsies has allowed me to understand my disease to understand how my body is evolving. If I only had one message to provide anyone that's uh, talking to a hepatologist or a gastroenterologist about liver disease and they're discussing a biopsy, uh, the question isn't about why do I need the biopsy, it's you need the biopsy. Um, they need to confirm your diagnosis uh, because your body's different than everybody else. If your doctor 
tells you that you need a liver biopsy, trust him. Ask questions, get as much information, work with your doctor as a team. Although it is considered a safe intervention, as with any minor procedure, there are risks associated with a liver biopsy. The most common complication is mild pain near the biopsy site. In one out of five patients, that pain may last minutes to a few hours after a liver biopsy. This rarely requires painkillers, but if you experience any pain, your doctor will give you pain medication. Another rare complication associated with liver biopsy is internal liver bleeding that can occur less than one in 1,000 times that a biopsy is done. A liver biopsy is a test your doctor will use to evaluate the current health of your liver and understand more accurately the level of inflammation in it. Your doctor will explain the benefits and risk to you. Be sure to ask questions about anything you don't understand. The results of your liver biopsy may indicate that you're not at risk or have very low risk of progression and complications due to liver damage. Low risk likely means you're at the early stages of NASH. However, the results may indicate that you're at a higher risk. Being at a higher risk could lead to liver cirrhosis and other health-related complications. Ultimately, a liver biopsy will help your doctor accurately understand your condition and recommend a treatment plan. You might be interested to know that your health institution may have an available clinical trial investigating a possible new drug treatment for NASH. Clinical trials are studies of drugs that are still in development or have not yet been approved to treat patients with a specific condition being studied. In a clinical trial, an investigational drug is evaluated to determine whether or not it is safe and effective. In order to demonstrate how effective the drug is, it may be compared with a placebo, which is a dummy pill that contains no real medical effect and or the current standard of care. By participating in clinical trials, patients help advance what we know about these investigational drugs. In doing so, clinical trial participants can play an important role in getting new drugs approved for use when treating patients with a similar condition. If you are considering participating in a clinical trial, you are entitled to receive detailed information regarding what is known about the drug before you decide to enter a clinical trial, and you must provide a signed informed consent document indicating that you understand what will happen during the clinical trial before participating. Over the course of my career, I have led many clinical trials and I am personally thankful to all the patients and their families who choose to participate. Without them, we wouldn't be able to make so many important advances to help patients live better lives. When participating in a clinical trial, not only may you benefit, but you may also contribute to the lives of other patients living with your condition. The first step is talking to your doctor to learn more. I hope this video was helpful and please, if you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask your doctor.